Every day, hour after hour, hundreds of people who've come from all over the world grab their spots in the bleachers or stand patiently, gazing out at what looks like a giant anthill in the distance. But looks can be deceiving. Just give it a minute, wait for it. This is the Old Faithful Geyser in Yellowstone National Park. For visitors here, the geyser erupting, spewing water and steam more than 100 feet in the air is a must-see event. Old Faithful was given its name because, well, it's just that, pretty darn reliable, giving the tourists a show about 20 times a day. The geyser is what's known as bimodal, meaning two types of eruptions, either longer than three minutes or shorter than two and a half. I mean, something must amaze you all the time. I mean, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Old. Oh, no, it never gets old. I mean, there's the thing about Yellowstone is just when you start getting complacent, you'll see something that you've never seen before. National Park Service Ranger Rich Yaley has been here for nearly 30 years. There are more geysers in Yellowstone than the rest of the planet combined. So at least 50% of the known geysers on the planet are in Yellowstone National Park. 50% of the known geysers Correct. on the planet are in Yellowstone National Park. In fact, there are between three and 500 geysers here, along with hot springs, mud pots, and steam vents. Every image of the park is burnt into his memory, from the thousands of old faithful eruptions he's seen to the magnificent waterfalls of Yellowstone River Canyon. But Yaley, like so many others, is deeply concerned, and for good reason. The park he knows may not be recognizable in the not-too-distant future. Climate change is real. The question is, what can we do about it? What do are we able to do about it? And what's you know, what is some place like Yellowstone going to look like in in 20 years, 50 years, 100 years? It may very well be a very, very different, and it likely will be a very different ecologically um, functioning system than it is now. Mark and Mary Atia are here with their children, a trip they've been planning for more than two years. It is good though that you got to see it the way it is now with your kids then you know because it may not be the same in the future uh, that's true but life is always changing so hopefully when they have kids they can bring their kids and see how it's different and they can compare mm -hmm. when we came when we were kids it looked this way and now it's different but okay different how Old Faithful will still be here in the Yellowstone Falls, the bison that pretty much have the run of the park and certainly have the right of way on all roads. They might adapt to change, but no guarantee. Scientists believe one thing you'll miss is the aroma of pine because the trees will disappear. Yellowstone is covered in forest. It's been this way for thousands of years. But for just how much longer will this magnificent canopy still be here? Scientists say that within a hundred years, it might all be gone. Robert Gillies is a climate scientist at Utah State University. What we've heard is that you may, the, the park today may not resemble what, the park a hundred years from now may not resemble what the park today looks like. Is that fair to say? Yes, towards the end of the century, I would imagine that they will experience forest fires which will change the ecology of the whole region uh, in differing ways. Gillies believes the forest would likely be replaced by a grassland. The beautiful meadows of wildflowers covering the sides of the hills like a blanket would vanish. So how would this happen? Well, the climate is expected to be much hotter and drier, with summer thunderstorms and lightning triggering the forest fires. The trees have a natural survival mechanism, dropping seeds after a fire to regenerate the forest. That might not be the case in the future. Ann Rodman is a National Park Service scientist. So one of the things is if we have increased wildfires, we're going to have more fires more um, areas they're going to be, you know, the trees are going to burn. They're going to have to start over from scratch. But as the climate increases, I um, mean, the temperature increases and it gets drier, uh, it, there's a question about which, uh, whether those, those seedlings are going to be able to grow back. And so it's unclear what's going to replace the trees 
In the next 100 years, scientists believe the temperature in and around Yellowstone will increase from 5 to 14 degrees. During the last ice age, that same warming took 5,000 years. One of the things about climate change isn't that these changes in temperature haven't ever happened this amount, it's how fast it's gonna happen. And that has never happened at the, the rate that it's, and that makes it so hard to predict how plants, animals are gonna react to a, a change that comes that quickly. How do you know and decide what to conserve and what conservation measures you need to make if you don't know what creatures and species are gonna be here to preserve? And that, yeah, that's definitely a, a, an issue. I mean, when you go far enough out, a hundred years from now, that's, uh, you know, depending on how dramatically the climate changes, there will definitely be different suites of animals out there. And there will be some species that aren't here anymore that are here right now. The frustration for scientists and the National Park Service is that it's difficult to prepare when you don't know exactly what the impacts will be. It's a lot to digest and consider this climate curveball. It's gonna get really warm, but more snow will likely fall in the mountains. It just won't last. Why? Because spring will come earlier and won't last as long. And get this, computer models show long-term, there will be 80 to 100 days more per year where the temperature will be above freezing compared to the 1960s. Are there things going on that are indicative of climate change either in the works or coming? So climate change is happening all over the world in different ways. As far as uh, Yellowstone is concerned, or even Wyoming for that matter, what the models are suggesting is that they're going to get more snow at higher elevations, okay? But then the melt-off is going to change, it's going to be earlier, right? So that's one aspect. So you're going to get more snow, therefore the potential for more flooding earlier. Yellowstone experienced what may be an ominous foreshadowing of what's to come. Holy sh In June, on the Yellowstone River. An historic flood triggered by snowmelt and an unheard of rain event struck the northern end of the park. Roads washed away, bridges, trails. The park was closed for nine days. It will take years to completely rebuild the infrastructure and cost hundreds of millions of dollars. The three days leading up to the, the peak of the flood, we just had rain and it rained all day and then it rained all day the next day and then it rained all day the next day. And we just never, that just doesn't happen here. You know, I've seen a lot of thunderstorm events here. I've seen a lot of, you know, heavy precipitation, you know, in short periods of time. I've never seen anything quite like that. I don't think any of us had that have been here a long time. So just how much water poured down the river? The normal flow is 1,000 cubic feet per second measured as water passes a single point. And during the flood, the amount was an astounding 50,000 cubic feet per second. And it happened just as the park was in the midst of a year-long anniversary celebration. Yellowstone is the oldest national park in the world, established 150 years ago. But times have been difficult leading up to this anniversary. Two years of pandemic, followed by an historic flood. This last three years has been probably the roughest three that we've ever dealt with. Rick Honinghausen handles sales and marketing for Yellowstone. The pandemic actually resulted in an increase in park visitation numbers, but revenue was substantially down. 20% of the park's rooms were closed, along with some food services. There just weren't enough workers. 2022 was supposed to be a rebound year. And, and we were looking very good going into the floods. And after the floods, a lot of people have now canceled. So there's availability now that we did not have in early June. And it's, it's enough where I can look anybody in and say, you can find a room here tonight if you'd like to stay in the park. You're coming out of the pandemic, then you get this 
freak event uh, that, that kind of set, it was a setback, wasn't it? it was, I think it was at several levels. We were counting on this year, for, just from a business perspective, to be a recovery year. And it was had every bit the look of that. Like I said, before January, before June, I should say, we were looking like we were good for the year. Um, and then this happened. Tourism visits to the park shrunk in August by 37% compared to the 2021 numbers. July wasn't much better. Revenue was down 20%, but high water didn't deter Bob Davis. He's been coming here from Pennsylvania for 20 years to fly fish for trout in the cold, clear waters of the Yellowstone River. You don't have to catch a bunch of fish every day. We just like the area, too. One of the most popular areas just outside the park is the town of West Yellowstone. The park's nine-day post-flood closure hit small businesses here hard right as the summer tourism season was beginning to roll. By midsummer, the town, which is a gateway to the park, was showing signs of life, but not enough to make up for nine lost days. We commit a lot of our revenue right to go right back in the park, and a small business owner is, doing, is making his or her money right now to make it through the winter. So 20% or more is a huge hit, some are, some are worse. Yellowstone National Park and the communities around it, West Yellowstone, Jackson Hole, and Gardner, Montana, are totally dependent on tourism. But as the grip of climate change tightens, there may well be more extreme events. Tourism could melt away like the snow on the mountains. You're an optimist, though? I, I think... Realist, optimist, I mean... Oh, you know, really... <laughs> we can't put a, we can put a label on it. Like I said, the more you study climate change, the scarier it is, yeah. and the more you realize this this isn't just gloom and doom and people waving their arms for no reason whatsoever or to get attention. This is very real. I mean, this is absolutely happening. It's going to have a huge impact on everyone's life. Doesn't matter if it's your vacation in Yellowstone or you live here or wherever you go home to after you're you know, leave here. In Mammoth Hot Springs, near where the flood washed out the roads, elk graze in the center of town, oblivious to the cars and tourists. Not far away, a family of bison are roaming with their young. Flowers are in summer bloom. Down at the Geyser Basin, Old Faithful is old reliable, erupting again. A procession of people walk a boardwalk, winding its way around one of the boiling hot springs and the water cascades relentlessly over the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone Falls. That's what I hope for, is that we will always have Yellowstone and places like Yellowstone uh, as a human race to have that relationship with the natural world. Uh, I tell, often tell people my worst day in Yellowstone may be better than a lot of people's best day. For now, that may all be true. For now, the creep of climate change is undetectable to the millions who come every year to marvel at the wonders of Yellowstone. Ultimately, how much climate change alters the park, no one can say. No one can say which animals and plants survive and which don't, or whether the forest is resilient enough to stand tall through the onslaught of fires. No one can say whether raging floods will become a common theme all anyone can say is that Yellowstone will someday be a very different place.